All right, welcome back to the channel. Um, you know, I was going to put up a video last weekend, but you know, I didn't really have uh, all the parts that I needed to uh, redo the front brakes on this thing. And you know, that's basically what I'm going to be doing a video of today. Um, you know, I've got the uh, brake calipers, uh, pads, uh, hoses, and you know, pretty much that's that's about it for the uh, front that I'm going to do on the brakes. But um, I guess uh, some of you have seen the uh, wheels that I recently picked up. I posted up a uh, a short video on those, and I might give you guys you know a little bit more information on those wheels and you know what they came off of and what I might possibly uh, be doing with them. So I guess uh, with all of that, uh, let's get started and I'll show you the uh, parts that I got for the brakes. All right, right here is uh, basically the parts that I'm going to be using. Um, you know, it's not all of the parts, but you know, I do have another caliper here, um, another brake hose, and uh, you know, pretty much everything else for the other side. But um, basically, this here is a uh, remanufactured uh, Bendix uh, factory uh, front caliper. It, you know, I actually found this at my uh, local O'Reilly's and you know they had you know they had them for sale which I could not find uh, basically anywhere else so I went ahead and got the uh, the two of those uh, they came with you know the hardware kit here with the uh, with the pins that hold the uh, pads in place and the uh, other retainers here and I also picked up uh, these uh, pads and this uh, brake line here from FCP Eero. And these are uh, Pagged, if I'm pronouncing that right, uh, brake pads. And from what I understand, these are, these are actually pretty good. Um, you know, I, I really don't know. I've never... I uh, had them on any of my uh, on any of my Mercedes so far, but I thought you know I've heard uh, pretty good uh, reviews on them, and I just thought I would you know give them a shot and see how they do. But this here, this is a, a Cortico uh, brake line for the front, and. I'm basically going to, you know, be replacing both the uh, brake lines on the front of the car just because they do look old and original. And I've also, if I come over here and pick it up, I didn't even think to grab it. But this also came with, uh, with the two brake lines for the front from SCP Aero. It came with this uh, ATE Type 200 uh, brake fluid. And it says here that it's racing quality. Um, you know, I, you know, I don't, <laughs> you know, it's not going to, you know, mile 300 SD, it's not a race car, pretty much. But, you know, I thought, you know, we'll, we'll give it a try and, uh, you know, see, you know, just how good it does and, and all of that but uh, they do recommend on here that you change this stuff out every three years but you know it's not that big of a deal to do so uh, basically I guess we'll uh, get this thing jacked up and get the front wheels torn off of it and we'll start getting in there and replacing uh, parts all right, um, I got in here and I've already uh, got the uh, brake line uh, taken off of it, which was kind of a bit of a hassle. Um, you know, with you know, if you watched uh, any of my other videos, whenever it's whenever it comes down to uh, taking out 
uh, bolts or, uh, you know, loosening up nuts or, you know, whatever. It's not that easy to do, but this uh, brake line uh, where it connects to the hose that comes down to the caliper, um, yeah, it was, uh, you know, it... You know, it was basically just about like any other bolt uh, that has been on this car. It needed a little bit of help to come off. Um, you know, I sprayed it down with uh, some PB blaster. And then I ended up having to get uh, my little uh, uh, propane torch and heating it up. And, and still, even with that... Um, it just didn't want to come off, and I ended up having to get on there uh, with some uh, vice grips and, you know, being very carefully with them uh, not to, uh, you know, damage the uh, nut on the end of the line that goes into the hose. I was actually uh, able to get that nut backed off of the, uh, of the hose, so... Pretty much, um, that just leaves us now with uh, coming in here and uh, taking off the uh, two uh, caliper bolts. And this right here, this is the uh, the original line on it, which, yeah, seen better days. But what I'm going to do now, there's two bolts back in here on the back side of this caliper that hold it on and... Um, there's also this right here, which, um, evidently I thought it was hooked up, but evidently not. It, there's a, a hole up here in the, uh, inner fender of the car, uh, that, that these wires, uh, go into. And all this does is, uh, you know, it'll light up a light on the dash. Uh, to tell you if your brake pads are getting thin because it'll get down so far on the pad and there should be actually a couple of little wires that come over here to the top side of these uh, pads that come off of this piece that will actually get in there and make contact and it will light up a light on the dash to let you know that your pads are getting bad but that light was uh, not working basically because uh yeah this wire here was yeah pretty much not even hooked up but well uh we'll get in there and i'll get these uh two bolts here taken out of the back of the caliper and then we can uh, get the caliper off but you might want to uh if you're wearing headphones or whatever it's probably going to get a little loud uh because I will be using my impact to get these out. We'll, uh, we'll try this without that extension on there. There we go. Sometimes, if you use a extension on an impact, or really on, uh, you know, anything else that you're you know, trying to take a bolt out with, 
you'll actually lose uh, some force trying to put it through a extension. And yeah, I should have put uh, some gloves on, but but yeah, there you have it, the uh, the old caliper and hose assembly and all of that. And you can see right here that these pads, uh, they were, they were not quite all the way down, but, but that's definitely uh, not good, not good at all. So, I'll, uh, I'll get my hands cleaned up here, and clean up some of all of this mess around here where that brake fluid's been leaking and uh we'll get we'll get back into uh you know reassembling it okay um before i go to uh put the, put the uh, caliper on over here on the passenger side that's where i've been basically doing all of the work over here um i wanted to show you that there is a difference between the passenger side and the driver side caliper and if if you do not know this and you go to put them on you will not be able to get your brakes bled and you know you basically uh yeah you you can't drive it so um looking at these calipers here well if i don't drop it um you can see here that this is where the bolts go through to mount the caliper on the uh, back side of the ca uh, on the back side of the uh, spindle or whatever you want to call that down there on the suspension and your bolts go straight down in through here and up here this is your uh, bleeder screw this is what lets the air out of the suspend or out of the uh, brake system and you know, if you look over here at this one, you know, if you were to take and you were to turn, you know, these to get those bolts to line up to how you mount it, your bleeder is down here. And if you put that bleeder screw down on the bottom, you're not going to be able to get the air bled out of the, uh, out of your chamber up here. Um, basically all it's going to do, you're just going to be pumping uh, brake fluid out of the bottom. And, you know, that's not going to get all of the air out of the system and therefore your brakes won't work. So you have to make sure that whenever you go to put these calipers on, that your bleeder up here at the top is, you know, always at the, at the highest point on the caliper and not, and not down here on the bottom. So that's just a little uh, information that, you know, some people, you know, might not know about. And, you know, that's just kind of the uh, correct way to do it. So we'll, uh, we'll get in here and we'll get the uh, bolts and the uh, caliper put on. And, yeah, we'll get back after it. Okay. Um, I've got... 
all of my bolts cleaned up uh, to put the caliper back on and I'm going to show you uh, one thing that I like to like to do uh, personally uh, some people say that they don't like to do this and all of that but I'm here to tell you for as many years as I've been uh, you know putting brakes on the uh, front of these Mercedes here like this um, you know I've always used you know a little bit of a you know Permatex you know blue or you know Loctite blue or you know whatever you know kind of along those lines it's a median strength uh, you know uh, a thread locker basically and you know you don't need quite that much on there but I'll take and you know just kind of put it around there a little bit just because the uh, very first time I ever done brakes on the uh, front of one of these Mercedes was actually on my old wagon and I actually had uh, one of the bolts back out and the caliper um, got up and got loose of it and it came up and got up inside the wheel and yeah that was uh, that was not fun um, you know especially going to find another bolt but you know some people say that this you know thread locker here will not put up with the heat that is caused down here by the uh, brakes but you know from you know from what I've done um, you know I've never never had an issue with it you know I just don't think that it doesn't get hot enough down there where this bolt goes in to hold it uh, to you know mess with the uh, you know with thread locker but like I was showing before this is your bleed screw and you always want this you know at the highest position on the caliper and we'll go ahead and we'll get this uh, fit on there And one other thing, I don't, I don't like using my impact uh, wrench to put these back together with, uh, just because I, I feel myself that it, you know, it doesn't give me the. Basically, I just don't like doing it because I don't trust. Uh, you know putting things back together with an impact because you just never know if you know if that impact is putting down enough force you know to keep things together
and I will come back in here uh, later with a with a torque wrench and I'll probably torque these down oh I don't know probably around 120 foot pounds maybe more just kind of depends on uh, you know how I feel things are you know tightening up with it but that should be more than enough to uh, you know keep those bolts in and and all of that all right um, now basically uh, you know that's pretty much it on you know putting the caliper itself on um, we can uh, we can get in and uh, start getting these uh, brake pads and I'll get that hose put on Okay, um, we'll get into uh, getting these uh, pads put on, but this right here, these are what actually holds the uh, pads in the caliper. Um, you know, they're just kind of like a little slide pin that, you know, slides in through the side. But I've, uh, I've had these out and uh, been soaking them in a carburetor and choke cleaner just to kind of help uh, clean them up and now basically I'm just going to take a little bit of brake cleaner to finish uh, spraying them off and we'll you know kind of take a look at uh, you know what they look like and if I need to take them in there to my bench grinder uh, you know to put them to get them up on that wire wheel to clean them up more I'll probably go ahead and do that but but yeah i'll just take a little brake cleaner and and you know those didn't come out nearly as good as what i was wanting them to um I've got, you know, the reason why I wanted to use these is because they got this tip on here that actually holds them into place. Um, but the calipers actually came with a new hardware, but they didn't have uh, that style of a pin that goes in there. And it actually had a couple other things in there that I've, that I've never uh seen like i'm not sure how they got these put on there um but but these here are the uh, new pins that came with that caliper and you can see the difference between the uh between the heads on them here this one here has got this little deal up here at the top that um, basically kind of mushrooms out once you get it up inside the caliper to help uh, hold it in place. And these down here have actually got just a little uh, clip that goes in through a uh, hole down there to, uh, you know, help hold it into place. I guess I might go ahead and uh, use these uh, new ones here just to see uh, you know how they work out but I'm going to save those old pins back and yeah just in case I don't like how these are working but basically um, on your pads here there's really you know no front or back uh, pad they're basically pretty much the same um, so you can pretty well just put them in there uh, you know just kind of how however well I don't mean however you need to put these uh, these holes up here this is where the uh, pins go through 
and you just take them and uh, slide them in there just kind of like that and now just take the pin and put the pin through and before you do that there is this retainer right here um, this is actually off of the uh, old caliper and you know I had it soaking with the uh, pins last night but um, we'll uh, we'll kind of spray this off and see And you know that doesn't that doesn't look too bad. I mean, I could, you know, I could take it in there to the uh, wire brush to see if I could get it to clean up a little better, but it's probably not going to clean up any, you know, too much at all. But basically, that just kind of slides in underneath there. And you can take the uh, the other pin that came with it, and it just slides right in through here, through the back. Just like that. And one thing I forgot, I guess I forgot to get my... Uh, my hammer because it feels like I'm going to have to tap these pins in just a little bit more and yeah but basically that's kind of how that's done right there um, I guess next we'll uh, go ahead and put the uh, the brake hose on it and you know that's pretty much going to be it I'll move on to the other side and get them uh, done up but but yeah I'll go, uh, I'll go get my hammer and drive those pins in and then I'll get to uh, replacing that hose. Okay, um, basically uh, this is your brake hose here and it just connects uh, pretty much down here on the uh, top of the caliper and then there's a line back up in here uh, by the inner fender that this and this little bracket right here connects onto. Uh, this basically just kind of fits, you know, over the end like that, and it's got a little tab that sticks out um, that, you know, basically all of this just kind of fits over. But I'll show you that here in a minute. But pretty much I don't use any, you know, type of a thread locker or, you know, anything like that on uh, any of these just because it, you know, doesn't really need them. Just as long as you, uh, you know, get in here and get them tight, you know, you should be good to go. But we'll, uh, we'll just start off down here on the bottom and get this uh, threaded in. You know, get it tightened up to where, um, you know, you ain't going to have any leaks. It doesn't have to be, you know, super tight, but, you know, pretty tight. And one thing you want to make sure of is that you don't knock uh, any dirt or anything like that uh, down into this line. <clears throat> because if you do that, uh, then you're going to be uh, clogging up the line and 
yeah, then your brakes ain't gonna work. So, so yeah, be uh, be mindful of that that you don't knock, you know, anything down into this line or you know down into the caliper uh, whenever you have uh, everything tore apart. And, you know, if you straighten up the wheel like that, it, uh, it does kind of help to, you know, get some tension off of that line to be able to get it, you know, put back up in there. All right, um, that's pretty much uh, it whenever it comes to, uh, you know, putting the uh, brake caliper and uh, pads and the hose on it, uh, you know, kind of, you know, not too uh, terribly uh, difficult to, you know, to do except you know that nut up there on top on that line coming down um that that was a little difficult to get out of there um and you know i might have uh you know messed up the uh the nut you know where you put the wrench on it the flats basically but um but i've got it uh pretty well tightened down and and yeah i guess the uh the next thing we'll do is uh, bleed the brakes, but I'm going to need a little bit of uh, assistance with that. So, um, yeah, but pretty much there you go. There you have it. Um, got the uh, brakes put on the front. Uh, you know, I really need to get in there and probably replace the uh, rotors also because they're 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 a little thin on the uh on the driver's side the uh, passenger side over here i don't think it's been working uh for a little while now uh you know it's it, you know it's a little bit thicker uh over on the uh, passenger side than what it is on the driver but um but yeah got everything put back together got the uh, brakes bled on it um you know took it out for a drive and everything seems to be uh working pretty good but um you know i i really hated to put uh those new calipers and pads on it without replacing the rotors but you know the rotors ain't warped and they're not too ter too terribly bad uh, you know wore down so I think I'll be fine for a little while but I need to get those rotors uh, ordered and get them in and I don't know if I'll shoot a video on replacing them I might because it's you know it's a little bit of a process to replace the front rotors on uh, the uh, front of one of these Mercedes 
but uh, this right here, um, you know, I posted up a, a short video on uh, these wheels. These wheels here are off of a uh, newer uh, CLK uh, class uh, vehicle, which if you don't know what a CLK is, it's basically a two-door uh, C-class Mercedes. But these wheels here are uh, pretty lightweight. Um, you know, a lot of people uh, will use these on, you know, like like my C55, and some people will run them on E55s, uh, just because they are so much lighter than a lot of, uh, you know, even AMG wheels. But I, if I was to put these on the uh, SD, I would have to run a uh, just a little bit of a, a spacer in behind them because the hub on a lot of these uh, mid-80s Mercedes like this, they stick out just a little bit too far to be able to put the center caps on. So I'm not sure yet what I'm gonna do with them. Uh, you know, I might put them on here, maybe, but you know, I really do kind of like the uh, wheels that came on the car, but I don't know, time will tell. But, um, you know, and I, you know, I just put this video up as, you know, just an informational video on, you know, basically how to do brake work, but I don't, you know, I don't want everybody thinking that, you know, just because you watch this video that you can get out there and, you know, do stuff like this on your own, because if you got any doubts on, you know, trying to do this kind of work on your own, then you probably uh, shouldn't attempt to do it because, you know, your brakes are, you know, what slows you down whenever you're, you know, you're traveling, you know, down the highway. And if you're unsure about what you're doing, then you, you probably shouldn't be uh, attempting to do uh, any brake work because, you know, there are so many things you know that you could potentially get wrong whenever you're doing brakes but you know if you don't feel like you know it's something that you want to try to tackle you know it's better to let a uh, professional uh, do it for you because you know if you mess something up on your brakes you know not only are you putting yourself in danger but you're putting other people on the road in danger but you know I don't know what my next video is going to be. Um, I uh, I need to get. I'm thinking about putting shocks on it because it it definitely needs them. Uh, you know, there's a couple of other things that I'm thinking about doing, but more than likely, uh, doing the shocks are probably going to be the next video. But you know, if you like what you see. Um, you know, I've got plenty of more uh, work to be able to do on this car. So, you know, hit that subscribe button. You know, give me a like, you know, if you like the videos. But we'll, uh, you know, I'll try to get more videos up, you know, sooner. Um, you know, it's just kind of waiting on parts to get in to be able to get stuff like this done. But hope you enjoyed it. And, you know, have a good day.